A sigmatropic shift is nothing more than an intramolecular reaction in which an H atom moves from one position on a molecule to a different position on that same molecule. And to see what we mean by that, let's take a look at the following molecule. So let's say we take 1,3-pentadiene as shown and we place it under thermal conditions. At first glance, no reaction actually seems to take place because the products that we form is exactly the same as the reactants that we begin with. So we begin with 1,3-pentadiene and we end up with 1,3-pentadiene with, uh, as well. Now, what actually is taking place is a reaction, an intramolecular reaction, but we can't see it in this case because our molecule is not labeled isotopically. So the fact that we have an unlabeled reaction, that hides the fact that a reaction is in fact taking place. If we replace these three H atoms with three deuterium atoms, we see that the product is different isotopically than our reactant. So we see that one of the H atoms moves to this H atom and that shifts these two pi bonds onto different positions. So we see that if we label the hydrogens isotopically, this will reveal an intramolecular reaction in which the H atom basically moves from one carbon to a different carbon. And this is an example of a sigmatropic reaction, a sigmatropic shift. Now, the carbon atom where the H atom begins on is known as the starting carbon. That atom is given the number one. And the last carbon where our atom, where our H atom ends up on is known as the terminal carbon atom. And to determine the position, the number on the terminal carbon, we simply begin counting with our starting carbon and go all the way on, all the way up to our terminal carbon. And to designate this particular sigmatropic reaction, we use those two values. We take the values, we place them into a bracket, and we place that in front of our sigmatropic shift. So X basically means the starting carbon and Y means our final carbon, the terminal carbon. So, for this particular case, our H atom, in this case deuterium, basically begins on this carbon and so uh, we give it the value 1. And then we begin counting all the way up to the carbon where our D basically moves on to. So that is the fifth carbon, so we have 1, 5 sigmatropic shift taking place. Now, what exactly is the error formulism or the reaction mechanism for this particular reaction? So let's take a look at the following section. Now, we have to point out the fact that this is not a polar reaction. It's not a reaction between a Lewis acid Lewis base. And that's exactly why the error formulism for the reaction mechanism can go both ways. So we can either have this sigma bond breaking off, carrying this electron, this H atom all the way to this carbon. When that bond is formed, this pi bond breaks off, forms a pi bond here, which breaks off and forms a pi bond here. And, we, and so we form this product in a single concerted step. Now we can also go in the other direction. So here we go clockwise, but here we go counterclockwise. This pi bond can also take off the H atom, breaking this bond, which forms a pi bond, breaking this bond, forming a pi bond here. So the error formulism is correct in both cases, and that's because our sigmatropic shift is not really a polar reaction. So this basically implies that because our reaction is not a polar reaction, we don't form any type of polar intermediate within our reaction, this reaction is not affected by the type of solvent that we use. It's also not affected by the acidity or the basicity of our our reactions. And so it doesn't matter if we use a polar solvent, a non-polar solvent, this reaction will not be affected. In fact, this reaction takes place readily in the gas phase, in the gas state. 
Now, something that does affect the type of sigma tropic reaction that takes place is the conditions under which the energy comes from. So if we use a thermal reaction or a photochemical reaction, if we change the source of energy, the sigma tropic shift will also change. So we said that if we take the 1,3 pentadine and we place it on the thermal conditions where the energy source is heat, our 1,5 sigma tropic shift will take place. However, if the energy source comes from light, if we are under photochemical conditions, and we take the same 1,3 pentadiene molecule and react it under light conditions, then we form a different product. We form this product that is that has undergone a different type of sigmatropic shift, in this case, a 1,3 sigmatropic shift, where the H atom basically moved from the first carbon to our third carbon. So we're going to discuss why this actually takes place in the next lecture.